going direct! Nick Wisdom with Team Ego Drift, and this is another Heli Direct Quick Tip. Today we're going to talk about workshop and field essential tools. Uh, the things you need when you're building a heli, wrenching on one, or uh, headed to the field and want to be prepared to fix anything that might arise on the day. With that, let's get into it. This is the ProTech RC tool bag. When you purchase it, it doesn't come with any of the tools inside here, but we're gonna go through in a few different categories and talk about the tools you'll most likely to need in the workshop and in the field. First category of tools we're gonna to talk to you about today are metric hex wrenches. Most of the bolts in a radio control helicopter are metric hex head bolts. And for that, you need a set of metric wrenches. Generally, you wanna buy a high quality set of hex wrenches. Why is that? Well, the harder the tip and the higher quality that they're made, the less chance there is of that tip rounding in the head of a bolt, in which case you won't be able to tighten the bolt, it'll get stripped out, it's a nightmare to remove that bolt, and it's just plain no fun. So you want a high quality set. There are a few ways, a few different manufacturers that make some great sets. This is an MIP uh, set of hex wrenches here, generally regarded as one of the best in the hobby. I also have another set by Scorpion Tools. Uh, who also make motors and ESCs. They make a great set of hex wrenches as well. Why do I have two sets? Well, there's a couple reasons. You can leave a set at home on the workbench and bring another set to the field. That's handy, and then you're not necessarily transferring tools around. Uh, the other reason is your feathering shaft. Now, there's a couple places in a helicopter on the uh, main head as well as the, uh, the tail rotor where you wanna be able to take two wrenches into that feathering shaft that has a bolt on each end and counter tighten against each other. So having two of the same size is really important for that. Uh, so what sizes do you need? Uh, helicopters 550 size and below, you'll need a 1.5, a two millimeter, a 2.5 millimeter and a three millimeter will get you all the way. When you start getting into 700s and larger size helicopter, having a four millimeter uh, hex wrench comes in handy as well. All right, the next set of tools we're gonna to talk about are nut drivers. What's a nut driver? Well, it's nothing more than a metric socket meant to fit over a metric nut on a screwdriver handle. Pretty straightforward. What do we use these for? It's generally two places on a helicopter uh, that we will find metric nuts, and they are on the blade grips of both the male rotor and the tail rotor. The bolt goes through the blade grip to a nylon lock nut. It's got a little bit of plastic that grips onto the thread so it won't loosen as it's spinning at high speeds. Uh, and you put a nut driver in one side and a hex wrench in the other, tighten against themselves, gets it all locked down. Two common sizes in sort of the 550 to 700 size. We've got a seven millimeter for the larger birds and a five and a half millimeter for the mid-sized birds. Uh, you will find these same nylon lock nuts on smaller helis. I don't carry uh, any other smaller nut drivers with me. What I do bring is just a basic adjustable crescent wrench. You can change the width to suit and for those little helis, you don't need to get those nuts super tight, so you certainly don't need any specialty tools for that. Basic crescent wrench also comes in handy for holding things. Sometimes when you're soldering a connector in the field and you need a little sort of makeshift device, it's just handy to have one of these in your tool. And a nice small one is much easier to carry around. All right, the next set of tools we're gonna to talk about are the utilitarian tools. What do I mean by utilitarian? I mean the basics that most folks already have laying around their workshop, but they're still necessary for what we do. All right, we've got a Phillips and flathead screwdriver. Pretty common, everybody's got them floating around a kitchen drawer in a workshop somewhere. Gotta have those. The other, a pair of scissors. In this case, these are a set of what's called canopy scissors. We've got a little bit of a curved tip, which is handy for cutting around uh, canopy edges or uh, other areas. They're just a nice small compact pair of scissors that fits in your tool bag. They come in handy for all sorts of things, cutting zip ties and the like. Uh, speaking of cutting zip ties, I also have a pair of what's called side cutters. Nice little pair of uh, cutters for cutting uh, the ends off of zip ties or any number of other uses where you're just trying to trim a wire per se. Uh, and while we're on the subject of two-handled pliers, here's just a basic pair of needle nose pliers. I have to say, I tend to use these for fishing bolts out of places I wish I hadn't dropped them that are stuck to the magnetic side of the motor can, for example. Uh, but they're always handy to have around. 
on men. Last but not least, this is what I think one of the most highly underrated tools, one of my favorites in my workshop. This is what's called an awl. What's an awl? It's essentially a pokey metal stick on the end of a wooden handle. Um, why is this handy? I like to use this when I'm trying to line up a stack of washers on top of my blades and slide it into the blade grip so I can run this through the washers and through the, uh, the hole in the end of the blade and then help it drag in to align everything. Um, because it's got such a fine tip, if those washers get out of stack, I can sort of just work it through the hole and then spin it around, you know, wiggle it around, try and get everything lined up properly. Um, and also comes in handy for digging little parts out that have fallen into strange places in the helicopter as you're building, things happen. Uh, I find myself reaching for this thing all the time for a wide variety of uses. So don't forget the uh, more utilitarian tools. They're handy to have around. Next up, we're going to go into some sort of specialty pliers category. And um, there's a couple of those we're going to talk about. First is what's called split ring pliers. They've got these little tips at the top that are meant to fit into an O-ring. Uh, generally, you may find those in some helicopters at the bottom of the main shaft. It's a little split ring that you expand the sides of it to fit over the shaft, and then you release it, and it grabs into a groove in the main shaft uh, that'll hold it in place. And you need this special tool. These two little prongs go into the little split on the ring, like so, and bend the ring away to fit it on the shaft, and then relax, and it'll grab the shaft nice and tight. So having these pliers, an XL Power 550 is a good example of a heli that uses a split ring on the main shaft. Uh, the other are a set of ball link pliers. Now, we use a variety of ball links on helicopters for our control linkages, both from the servos to the swash, the swash to the blade grips, and our tail servo linkages as well use these. Uh, these are a great pair of ball link pliers by a company called Lynx. Love these, I use them all the time. What they do is they enable you to pop the ball link off of a uh, servo ball or swash ball, etc., as well as snap it back on. And it does it with a lot less wear and tear than using regular pliers or your fingers, which can hurt like heck. Uh, it's one of those tools that you can live without if you have to, but once you have it, you'll go, oh my God, why am I not always using one of these? These make my life easy. Next up are some more specialty tools. These fall into the nice to have category, not necessary to have, but they certainly make one particular job easy. So in the main rotor head of a helicopter, there is a feathering shaft that goes side to side and joins the two blade grips that they rotate uh, around it. And there are two bolts counter tightened against each other in either end of that shaft. So when you crack them with a couple of hex wrenches, and here's a couple here, you know, you work against each other to loosen them. Uh, generally what happens if you end up with a main shaft with one bolt stuck in it. So how do you get that out? Well, this is the grippy by Align. And it is essentially just two one-way bearings. Those are bearings that will only turn in one direction in a metal handle. There's two because they're two different sizes. Um, they come in a few different sizes for different size uh, feathering shafts. Uh, this is a four and a six millimeter. This is an eight and a 10 millimeter. Uh, and how it works is this. So we've now got a main shaft with uh, one uh, bolt in the end of it. So we slide the shaft through the appropriate size hole. And now this is only gonna let me rotate this in one direction. So it can spin this way, but it can't spin this way. And what that means is, is as long as I have the shaft captured in here, I can take a hex wrench into the other end, loosen that bolt. This little one-way bearing is gonna hold the shaft so it won't spin. It's not gonna harm the main shaft. It's not gonna leave any marks on it. So now I can get that last bolt out of the shaft. So limited use, but boy, are they handy when you have them. Another quick tip video coming up soon that's gonna talk about some other ways that you can get that last bolt out of a main shaft with the tools you have at home. Last but not least, the last set of tools I like to keep with me is actually an adhesive, so it fits more into that category than tool per se, um, but extremely important to have with you in your bag, and that's Loctite. What's Loctite? It is an adhesive we use on the threads of a bolt uh, that when inserted into a metal fitting, so it's metal to metal, not metal to plastic. We never use Loctite when we're going into plastic. And what it does is when that thread turns into the you know, metal fitting on the inside, once the Loctite sets, we put it on the bolt in a small quantity, it will stop that bolt from spinning and loosening. So helicopters vibrate. There's a lot of spinning things. The whole helicopter, although not a lot, vibrates a subtle amount. And if you don't use Loctite, your bolts will actually slowly spin backwards and then fall out. And when bolts fall out on a helicopter, bad things happen. So we got three different types of Loctite I carry with me. Red Loctite, 
This is for things we want to permanently stay adhered. You can remove them with some heat and some other tricks, but maybe I'll cover another time. But red Loctite is for things like swash balls, servo balls, if they're into metal servo horns, things you don't ever want to come out. Like you, it's better to replace the whole swash than you know, risk a ball popping out of it with blue Loctite. Speaking of blue, blue Loctite. This is made by uh, SAB. You can get these from Loctite brand themselves. Uh, and a number of other manufacturers do buy quality Loctite. Do check the expiration date on it. Don't buy so much that you can't use it inside the space of about a year. It does go bad over time. Uh, blue Loctite, your everyday screws. You'll use this on most bolts in a helicopter that are in a metal to metal application that aren't necessarily mission critical. So your frame bolts is a good example uh, for blue Loctite. And last but not least, green Loctite. This is a retaining compound, meaning when we slide a bearing into a bearing block, we put a tiny bit of green Loctite around just the outside of the bearing, not any of the moving parts, and then slide it into the block, and that stops the bearing from going up or down in the bearing block. It's gonna stay there. Um, very limited uses for green, but the key places we use it, generally bearings in places. Uh, some uh, blade grips recommend you put these on the radial bearings in there. Uh, and applications like that. But when you put green on there, it's not coming out unless you use a lot of heat. So again, green and red, use sparingly in small quantities in just the right places, and then blue, your more everyday Loctite. Last but not least, let's talk about the tool bags themselves. Now that we've emptied it out, let's get the dust out of there. This is the Protec RC tool case. As you can see, it's just a number of elastic loops. Um, I have a couple of others. Why do I have so many? Because I can never decide what I want uh, and I'm constantly trying different things. This is the Scorpion tool bag that came with the uh, wrench set I bought. A few less compartments than the Protec RC one, um, but also high quality, works out well. <clears throat> and then I also have an even smaller Scorpion one uh, as well. I can never decide which one. Sometimes when I'm going to a fun fly, I'll bring extra tools and I'll fill up one of these with a few other odds and ends, uh, small tools, bits and bobs, etc. Um, but you'll figure out what you like. You don't have to use one of these. There's nothing that says that this is the way to go. A lot of folks will use a traditional, you know, tool box, tool bag, fishing tackle box, you know, any number of things. As long as it works for you, you can organize your tools in a quick way where they're in the same spot every time. Find them all, grab and go, take it to the field with you, take it to a fun fly and have fun and have the right things with you to fix it. Because there's nothing worse than a small problem that's easily fixable at the field, uh, ruining your day because you don't have the right tool with you. With that, I'm Nick Wisdom with Team Ego Drift and this is another Heli Direct Quick Tip. Heli Direct!